And then when it gets to a certain height, the water will begin to go down the furrows and water the crops. I think it's very easy for a lot of us that are, uh, in, have been in San Antonio a long time or all my life, like in my case, we look at those magnificent missions and we say, this is where our city began. This is where our city began, this muddy ditch. Because without the opportunity for a handful of people to produce crops that would feed multitudes, there was no opportunity to gather together a workforce large enough to construct these facilities. Then the facilities in turn attracted more people to come to our area. These muddy ditches actually are in many ways absolutely the beginning of our city. The other thing that happens here is specialization. A handful of people farm while others learn to cut stone, to build the walls and the churches, to learn the skills to be the first cowboys of Texas, vaqueros, riding Spanish horses, raising Spanish cattle. But it all begins with the water that you move to where you need it to water these crops. You can see that we're already beginning to get water into these furrows. This process can take as little as 45 minutes to completely water this field. And I don't think we could actually do much better if we had modern hoses and sprinklers. Then when I'm done, when Torin says, that's enough water, we'll go over there, close that gate that I opened, and if we needed water on the opposite side where the wheat had been growing, we can open it up to that side. When those two fields are watered, we open up the main gate and we could go 100 yards downstream, dam it off a next time for two more sets of fields. It, there's almost limitless possibilities in this process. This is Moorish technology, transferred by Spain, actually done the hard labor by the Native Americans that chose to join and become part of this Spanish kingdom along the banks of the San Antonio River. I'm gonna turn this over now to Torin. I'm gonna to kill the water so we don't flood, we don't have right Yeah, normally we, we let it go a little further, but it's already pretty saturated Absolutely. from all these Torin rains. Metz is our farmer. He can tell you more about the crops that are actually growing here in our fields. Yeah, so. Hello, thanks everybody for being out here. Um, I'm grateful to be a part of this project. Uh, this area you're looking at right now is kind of the, dem the current demonstration plot that we use for Sakia demos. And so uh, we've kind of got a variety of things growing at the moment. Uh, we got peppers, uh, blue corn, a flower corn, whole beans, some garlic still hanging over from winter, squash, and uh, some pumpkins. Sorghum, and that about rounds out. I've kind of did a little bit of everything here because this ends up being where most people who visit kind of see this field first, and this is kind of where we focus the educational program. And uh, beyond there, we've got some other areas. We basically have these uh, channels set up to where we can close off the water, uh, where you see these kind of earthen bands. We've got pipes beneath them, so I could I could cap them off, and I can open up that other channel in this same lateral ditch that brought the water all the way over here. Can, can shoot down there. We've got a couple of other things going down there, more corn, uh, tomatoes, and other things like that. And so I've been basically working over the course of, this is my second year uh, in the position. I've been working to establish a sustainable method that, that works utilizing the irrigation system. It's been quite a challenge. Uh, we're obviously limited in uh, mechanical <coughs> methods we could use. Once these fields are set up with the tractor, it's kind of all hand work, so I'm resorting to things like mulching and you know a lot of weed pulling, a lot of hoeing, a lot of uh, a lot of volunteer labor is going into maintaining these fields, and then the produce is being distributed uh, to the food bank. We've uh, donated some to the chapel here for Linton luncheons and uh, local nonprofits, so it's pretty much just uh, working currently as an educational side, volunteer-based farm. How much do you anticipate being able to donate? Banks from this farm. Do it? How many pounds of food or produce do you anticipate being able to donate to the food bank from this farm? Uh, I'm not sure that I didn't have to run the numbers on. Uh, I'm sure they've got some numbers for you. I'm not sure. I know that from this, this is about 5,000 square feet, and since uh, 
since December of this year, we've gotten about 900 pounds from, from 5,000 square feet. Uh, so it depends on the scale at which everything start, keeps growing. Um, we're expanding, so I think the poundage will, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. How many acres are actually being used to, for farming to grow things right now? Uh, maybe um, an acre and some change. Mm -hmm. um, so I've basically been I've been fo focusing on this area because I kind of got in here, and um, you know it's it's kind of like there's no manual for telling you how to how to start an acacia farm. You know, there's not a lot of. And where's the labor coming from? Is it just you, or do you get volunteers? There? It's me and, and volunteer base. So we have a uh, first Saturday work days out here that have started to catch on, and uh, kind of do other other events as they pop up. So and it's it's all volunteer been doing this? This is uh, my second year. So second. I, so this is a two year term. They yep. mentioned that through the Texas Conservation Corps and AmeriCorps position, and uh, I was able to get in the first year and expand it to the second year. And what did they call you? You're the farm. Uh, they just call me the farmer. I don't know. It's a, it's a farm coordinator position. Okay. I think is the farm, farm coordinator. coordinator is the technical title, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a little bit more involved. The reality of, of the role because it's kind of a developmental role. We're kind of developing, doing a lot of uh, historical research, and and uh, you know it kind of goes hand in hand, figuring out what they would have been growing, the crops that would have been available, and then at the end of the day, I feel like a big part of what I've been doing is just how to make it work practically you know how does it how can it function and still have these elements that give it historical integrity I think that's a it's a big challenge you know uh, farmers have a hard enough challenge you know farming conventionally or using other methods you know the weather the elements droughts but then you add in aesthetic concerns and historical factors and it becomes uh, quite a complicated uh, thing I think but it's an it's an interesting challenge uh, for me having a background in sustainable agriculture to have a historical lens, you know, overlaid on this. So do you go to Home Depot and get miracle Grow, or do you use no, some other kind uh, of more historical, authentic kind of fertilizing well, method? Well, a lot of what we've been using is, uh, is cover cropping. It's basically a green manure system. Uh, you grow the things that go in, that you chop down or till into the soil, and it creates a fertilizer. So you're growing the fertilizer in your field. So that's kind of the main uh, source of fertility that we've been uh, using. They would have historically probably used manure. They would also burn the fields, and that, that uh, increases fertility. Do you plan to put more land under cultivation in the near future? I think with this partnership with the food bank, I think that is what the, uh, the goal is, is that we will be able to expand the amount of land and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know at what rate it'll happen, but it's definitely going to be, it's going to be ramped up from here. It's already, I'm already trying to expand more, maybe getting an, an acre in full production. And then I'm sure with the help of all these wonderful people uh, from the food bank, we'll be able to tackle a lot more. And so you're the gardener who's going to be overseeing all, all the crops as the, after the, as the food bank uh, takes over the land? I, I've got till the end of the year and okay. I've got, I hope so. That'd be great. <laughs> And what was your name? Sorry. Torin Metz. Can you spell that for me, please? Uh, T O R I N M E T Z. Great, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that the plants in here are already